allow me to immediately define center of mass for you. And it is the point in the body, not necessarily the human body, by the way, and the point in the object, the point in the body where mass, where mass is distributed evenly, is distributed evenly, distributed evenly in all directions. Now in a uniform object, that's a really easy point to identify because it's literally the center of the object. But what about a human being? A human being isn't regular, say it's got toes and arms and legs and a head and hair and all this kind of stuff. Now, as a general rule of thumb, the center of mass is not at the thumb. The center of mass is roughly at here, the navel, the belly button. This is where we find the center of mass to be. Now, can I stress to you, it is an imaginary point and it can shift Okay, it is an imaginary point. It's effectively a result of physics. Okay, so it's imaginary, it shifts, we can manipulate it. Now, <coughs> excuse me, what I want to do next is I want to now talk about the factors affecting the position of the center of mass. So let's think about the factors affecting the center of mass. And I want you to get sort of to grips with the idea that if we change the distribution of our mass, you know, for example, if this person was to lean forward, if we were to change the distribution of mass, the center of mass moves. So for example, if this body was to lean forward, the center of mass would actually lower and come forward. If this person was to flick her knee up at the, uh, uh, well, flick her leg up at the knee, this center of mass would now move upwards and backwards because the mass has moved in that direction. So the distribution of mass affects the center of mass. Therefore, the movement of limbs affects the center of mass. So if we move our center of mass, or sorry, if we move our limbs, the center of mass will move in, a, in association with that. And finally, as I mentioned already, we've got the notion of uniformity of shape. So if we are talking about a discus, for example, the discus has an even distribution of mass, so this is negligible. It has no limbs, so can't move its limbs. Therefore, where does its Center of mass appear in the center of the body, in the center of the object. Now, this is all well and good, but let's see if we can apply this principle to some examples. And this is where you're, uh, I want you to actually have a go at these. I've got five for you. I would like to ask you, for all of these sporting examples, which letter A, B, C, or D most accurately represents the likely center of mass for these performers? And if you want to pause the video and do that for yourself, feel free, but I'm going to go over them. For our surfer here, she has brought her arms out, she's lowered her body, so her center of mass is going to move down slightly from her navel, but not far. She isn't lying on the ground, for example. She's not put her head really low. She's not stuck her, uh, her arms sort of backwards. So here, this A is likely to be her center of mass. What about this performer who's doing sort of like some sprint warm-up, it looks like? Well, the knee has lifted upwards and forwards, right? We, yes, we've got an arm out, but we've also got an arm in front. Now, I would argue that this, therefore, would be her center of mass, C. This one's a really interesting one. What about our performer here? This performer has their legs down here, the very heavy head, nice and low. They've got their shoulders low as well. And I would argue their center of mass, and by the way, it's not on their arm. The arm is just sort of transparent here. The center of mass would be this one or D. If this person actually arced more to get a real arc of the body, we could argue that that would be D. But I'm going to say C or D for that one. This one, though, will really give us the intuition of what we need. Here, we've got a body. We've got a human body. We've got the body which is connected to this very, very heavy bar. Now, I'm going to assume that the bar and the person are roughly the same weight. That's my assumption here. So with that in mind, the whole body is the weight and the human being. Where would the center of mass be? Well, it's definitely going to have moved up, right? Because we've got this heavy thing above. So would it be here? Would it be here? Would it be here? Now, I'm going to argue the answer is A. Okay, the center of mass is A. Now you might be thinking, well, hang on, James, that's in midair. Exactly, I come back to the imaginary point. Notice for our high jump, for example, if they arc enough, they can have their center of mass traveling below the bar while each, each segment of their body travels over the bar. That's why the Fosbury flop is in fact effective. Now let's go a little bit further. One last one, very similar to the one that I've just talked about. Here, we've got exactly the same position, although upright, not sort of squatting like this one. But here, they've got the same thing. But notice the golf club is significantly less heavy than the weighted bar. So where do you think 
the center of mass would be. And I'm gonna argue it's here on point B. Even though the arms seem to be in the same position here, the weight of this object is so much less that the mass is still distributed relatively close to the navel. So there are points I'd like to get across. And I, and I completely understand that that feels a little bit, mm, okay. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna talk about stability. What's the relationship of center of mass to stability. Well, I'm gonna give you sort of four principles. So here's principle number one. The higher the center of mass, the less stable. Okay, so if the center of mass goes upwards, the object, the body becomes less stable. So let's see if we can put that into a couple of examples. Can you see with this person here, they're in a nice squatted position. Yes, the center of mass is high. They've got the weight above their head. Do you think they will be more or less stable once they upright themselves, move up and stand on two feet? They'll raise that center of mass higher. They will become less stable. Think about a gymnast who's performing a handstand. When are they less stable when their legs are pointed straight up in the air or when they perform their legs maybe bent at the hip and at the knee? Of course, they're gonna be more stable in the latter because they brought their center of mass further downwards. Point two, let's have a look at mass. The greater, greater the mass, the more stable. Think about, let's say, uh, something like a 150 kilogram prop forward in rugby compared to, let's say, an 80 kilogram uh, um, scrum half in rugby. Which one is gonna be more stable on their feet and harder to knock over and tackle? Well, of course, it's gonna be the prop forward. They're heavier, they've got a greater mass. And that's a point we wanna make. So the more mass, the more stable. And of course these combine and you've gotta consider them in combination. Thirdly is what about the base of support? Okay, base of support. So if, I meant to write this into a statement, sorry. The broader or the larger the base, broader the base, the more stable. So consider, for example, a headstand and a handstand. A handstand has the two palms of the hand as the, as the base. A headstand has the two palms of the hand and the forehead. Which of those has got the broader base? Which of those are gonna be more stable? Well, of course, it's gonna be the headstand, for example. Think about if you were, um, think about if you were, for example, let's say, think about if you were, um, um, you were gonna be defending a corner in football and you wanted to get nice and solid so you couldn't be knocked over by the forward who's perhaps trying to head the ball, where you get a nice solid base, broaden your legs, and you'd make your base uh, more larger, right? Rather than your feet being together, which would make you very easy to destabilize. And fourthly, folks, fourthly, we want to address the notion of line of gravity. Now, this one is a really interesting one. And the point I want to make here is that line of gravity uh, should be above, above the base. So, Let's go back to our, let's say, sir, for example, earlier. Can you see here that the center of mass is above the base, which is the surfboard, the line of gravity, the log is just there, right? What if that surfboard kind of slipped in this direction and all of a sudden the surfboard was here and line of gravity was here? They would be destabilized, right? That's what we're talking about. Equally, we've got the idea here that the base for this performer is directly underneath the center of mass. The line of gravity is acting downwards to the base. If they were to, for example, if they were to um, have the bar sort of move slightly backwards, if they sort of like, if their shoulders are hyperextended, for example, that would mean that they would become much less stable and they may well fall over. So those are the key principles that I wanna get across to you. It is both the concept of the center of mass, but also the relationship of that center of mass to stability. Hope that's helpful, thank you.